not nervous at all. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> okay, I want to begin by um, thanking everyone who's joining us in for, um, as part of the webcast of this historic moment where Mike Irvine's going to be um, having his oral exam for his master's degree here at the University of Victoria. Mike is not actually at the University of Victoria. As you can see, he's underwater right now. And so this marks, as far as I know, the first time someone has had an oral exam to complete a master's degree whereas in education that's been conducted underwater. So this is a great moment for the University of Victoria. I'm Dr. David Blades, and I'm the chair of the meeting today. And I'd like to um, invite people around the table here to introduce themselves, starting over here. I'm Michael Hammond Todd. Mm -hmm. I'm David Monk. Right. Kathy Sadford. Jesse Oshanek. I'm Jillian Cornwall. Right. And our candidate is Mike Irvine, which you can see is <laughs> through the bubbles there, it's under the water there. And we're, Mike, we're expecting a real fluid presentation in a moment. <laughs> and um, his committee members are Dr. Mijan Kim, who is in Edmonton. And Hi. Dr. And Dr. Jason Price, who is literally above Mike, um, standing on a wharf. Jason, you can say hi to everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hi, Jason. So the order for today will be that um, our candidate, uh, Mike Irvine, will do a presentation. And then there'll be some questions. We'll begin with um, Dr. Kim, and then we'll turn the questions over to Dr. Price, his supervisor. We'll kind of go back and forth with that for a bit. And then there's an opportunity um, in this room if anyone wants to ask questions. I know Dr. Sanford can ask questions as well if she would like to. Uh, and at a certain point when we're satisfied with the questions, we'll ask the candidate to come out of the water, assuming he doesn't have to come out earlier if he runs out of air. He'll come out of the water, literally surface, and he'll move over into the park, and then I'll ask uh, the webcam will cease, and the committee will have a discussion about the presentation and uh, decide on a grade for his oral exam. So that's the process. All right, Mike, we're going to begin with you. Turn it over to you. Okay, well, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Mike Irvin. I'm a graduate student in the Faculty of Education, Curriculum and Instruction at the University of Victoria. I would like to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of our online viewers and surface dwellers in different places of the planet. I'd also like to acknowledge that we are on West Sanic and Coast Salish territory, and we're going to be doing this presentation live from beneath the waves at 20 feet down. I research is on underwater web cameras as tools to motivate and engage students in inquiry-based learning of marine science topics. So, I'd like to go to slide number two. I'd like to basically give a little bit of context for where we are, is that the ocean covers 70% and over 70% of the Earth's surface. It drives our climate, regulates our temperature, absorbs much of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and holds 97% of the Earth's water, and also contains 97% of the biosphere. I'd like to go to slide number three now, too. The ocean is a big place. And it may seem distant, but as you can see right now, we're finding new ways of bridging that gap. Our current understanding and our current connection with the ocean has not been good enough. We have had tremendous amount of impacts on the ocean, and as a result, it does indirectly and directly affect humanity and people on this planet. So we find ways of changing that, and we can. And the way to do that is by becoming informed, learning about marine environments, and a means of doing this, taking you there, having a conversation. So, like to go to slide number four? My research is on inquiry-based learning in particular. And I'm using inquiry because as a definition, it's all about the exploration of the natural and material world. From exploring, we discover. And from these discoveries, we can test our discoveries and further our knowledge. That is crucial and that is very important. And that's what underwater web cameras can help provide. So, 
to kind of ask a little bit more is that underwater web cameras are a new way of informing people about the ocean. It bridges that gap. It gives you a chance to engage in different and distant places. So, that's a little bit more, is that my research also looks at technology-supported inquiry learning, TSIL for short. And this allows a lot of TSIL projects have actually focused on simulating different environments digitally. They've also allowed for programs like GLOBE for students to go and do in situ research, meaning they can be in different places in their local communities, collect data, and share it online. There's also other programs that I talk about, which is KyLab. So, Ky is about knowledge integration. Each of these technology-supported inquiry-based learning tools suffer a significant challenge, and that is motivation. It's difficult to actually motivate and engage students in marine topics. So, what I'm talking about in my research is how we use underwater web cameras to initiate, engage, and motivate students' interest in learning more about these topics. So, I also discussed that STEM and ocean literacy are actually, they have the same fundamental principle. Ocean literacy, in particular, talks about how as we become more informed about our marine environments, we can actually make more informed decisions about our impacts on them. And that goes the same with STEM. STEM literacy also promotes the exact same thing, that we learn more about science, technology, engineering, and math, and it will help us to understand about the impacts that we are making on the ocean. So, going to continue on. Slide number five, please. One thing that I do want to mention is that inquiry-based learning being about the exploration and the discovery makes the ocean the perfect spot for it. How many of you really have been able to actually do this, go down and go diving and actually be able to see it? So this is the perfect subject to start this in a classroom or outside. So inquiry, as it says, it requires a greater amount of motivation to engage students in science curriculum. It's a challenging thing. Inquiry is about having students ask you questions, allowing them to ask their own questions and moving from those questions into deeper understanding and applying their own knowledge. So as we mentioned, there is a significant challenge. The TSIL projects are struggling with being able to motivate students to engage in science. I'm just going to flip this over. These are my dive slate presentations. <laughs> So as I mentioned, in my literature review, I look at CoLab, and that uses virtual environments. And in the CoLab study, and in the teacher interviews, it showed that over one-third of the students required the teacher to motivate them to engage in those environments to further that inquiry. For GLOBE, they use more of a physical data collection from different places in the world. And then... What that was came out of the uh, teacher interviews there was actually that students were having a lot of fun engaging with the natural environments. So something that uh, I believe this system and what underwater web cameras can do and what I've seen in my research is that it takes a hybrid of the virtual and the reality. It makes the real environment and the virtual and it puts them together. This is a great build upon the research that's already been done furthering motivation. And another thing that I've also looked at in my literature is the Jason Project and Banfield Marine Science Center. They actually talk about in their research and their studies the impact of live events, which are moments like these, where you can see, hear, and talk to the diver. And the motivational capacity that that carries. It really engages students, it grabs them, and it gets them hooked into wanting to learn more about marine science. And in their studies, they show through interviews and through even some of the tests and examinations that they've done that that is actually what's happening. So, I gotta find my spot. 
So I'm gonna go to slide number six, the fun part. My research. So my research is a pilot case study. And I was looking at, as a main question, are underwater web cameras effective tools for motivating and engaging students in marine science topics? This is a qualitative research and I was using video cameras in the classroom to record the reactions and the whole process that had taken place over a three-day period. And I was looking at also post and or pre and post surveys to measure students' interest in what was happening. And my group that I worked with was a small concentrated group of 15 students. They were grades four to six and they were mixed grades, so it was all in one class. All right, let's go to slide seven. So the process, well, I can tell you this was a lot of fun. <laughs> what we did to start off is that when I was in the classroom, I would describe the history and provide a bit of context for where we are and what we're gonna be looking at. We looked at the inner harbor of Victoria, BC. We also looked at Race Rocks. We gave a little bit of background as to what's happened, how people have affected the environment and what it looks like now. And then I turned on the live lens camera and I stepped back and I just waited to see what would happen. And almost in students started to engage with it. They were through their observations, they were asking questions, there was surprise, there was like just excitement about what they're actually looking at. It was really neat. And then from these questions and observations, we dug deeper. There was discussion that started to happen between other students trying to explain what they were viewing with previous knowledge. So that was something that was just pretty fundamental and significant. And that is, as this research looks at, a fundamental component of science. Being able to take what you are getting from your observations and applying it with your, your previous knowledge and enriching your knowledge and moving forward and deeper into those subjects. So, let's go to slide number eight. And actually, uh, just briefly too, I want to mention that a fundamental component of what I was looking at tied in with underwater web cameras was looking at the interconnectedness that we share with the ocean and people have with the ocean. Though I didn't really get to focus on it as much in this paper and in this thesis, it was something that I was looking at throughout this process. So my results. Well, the results of the motivation and engagement, I had created, trans I had transcribed text from the video feeds of the two separate days that I'd shown the underwater live feeds. And the way I measured motivation and engagement was through uh, my fragment number one and fragment number two. So looking at their initial reactions, their overall reactions, and that the types of questions and, and, and uh, comments that they were making, showing their levels of engagement. And what I had seen, especially on the first day, what my research looks at, is that it was very impactful. There was a lot of positive feedback coming from students and excitement about what they're looking at. And we had a lot of students that were asking questions throughout the whole process of when the live feed was shown. They were also using booklets during this time for species identification and so they're able to then go through the booklets looking at what they what they think it is try and explain it and then go to the booklet to try then verify if that was actually what they were looking at so then fragment number three and number four was looking more towards science inquiry so what kind of questions were students asking through these observations and also the explanations they were given through the discussion that they're having with their peers. There's a bit of collaborative learning that was happening at that moment. Students were sharing what they had experienced and what they understand and know so far about these marine worlds and these marine sites. So this full underwater web camera aspect of the live feeds initiated it effectively. So what I'd like to talk about, especially is that on day 
On day one, day two, there were a significant amount of questions that had actually come through. And you can see that in my paper, that there was a lot of questions that students were asking through their observations and analysis of the species that they're looking at. And then building upon that knowledge with their, with their peers. So I'd like to go to number nine, slide number nine, please. So, survey question. For this research, I focused on the post-survey question number three. And I, to me, it was a significant question, is that I was asking students if they liked seeing real live underwater environments on a smart board and why. And from all the, the reactions that we got, there was 13 out of the 15 students that had actually completed the post-survey. 11 of them were positive, one was neutral, and one was negative. And the one that was negative, I'm going to start with that, it's really interesting. The student was asking if it could be more interactive, that the reason why they didn't like it as much, the reason why they didn't fully enjoy the experience is because they felt that there needed to be more interaction with the marine sites. The neutral comment, which I also think is really interesting, was a comment about it wasn't what the student thought it would be. So that begs the question, well, what do you think it was going to be? I'll talk about that in my conclusion. But uh, the other questions that have come out is that a lot of students were excited. They thought the environment was so neat and so cool, and it takes straight from the, the quotes there. And actually, uh, if I can ask the surface, please go to... Oh, I think actually that might be up in question number nine. Yeah, so you can see it. A lot of students found that these environments were beautiful, and they, they wanted to see it. And even one student had commented on how they thought it was better than a still image still and recorded video, that they felt that it was taking them there. And that's significant. So I'd like to go to slide number 10. How am I doing on time, guys? Uh, you can wrap up any time, Mike. <laughs> okay. So in my conclusion part here, Slide number 10. Underwater web cameras represent a new tool for technology-supported inquiry learning, furthering upon the foundations of other TSIL projects, adding another layer and another aspect of motivation that can help into getting students having that conversation, learning about the ocean and engaging with it, and then marine science through that. So, implications of what this can mean for marine science, well, we can hook you in. You can use underwater web cameras to start that conversation, to start digging into the, building that interest of digging into the marine science that they're going to be learning about. And then once you have their interest, you have them engaged, you can then take that further and digging deeper into what they could be applying this with. Potential and limitations of technology, well, <laughs> it's working right now, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> technology, you know, technology is a, is a complicated thing at times, but it's also very simple. It's how you, how you use it that is most important. The technology is growing and changing every day. It's getting more advanced. It's connecting people from around the world like we are right now into different spaces and places. It is significant that it can actually do that. It's just how we use it. Underwater web cameras as stationary allow for you to have observations 24-7 of different marine sites and different marine environments. These live events like we're having right now, these are momentary. They don't last that long. And they're also a bit more technical. <laughs> so, in talking about marine awareness, well, here we are. We're underwater. We're having a discussion, looking at the marine environment, mostly me at the moment, but we've got so much life around us. And if you join, and you look through an underwater web camera, it takes you to those places. You get to have a chance to see the unseen. You get to go beneath the waves. You get to interact with these marine environments through observations, analysis, 
And when there's live events and live dives, you can see here and talk to your diver and ask them anything you've ever wanted to ask them about the marine world, and they can tell you. And if they can't, that's okay, because we can learn together what that is. So for future research, I would like to talk a little bit about what I found in my surveys and also what I found a bit of my research with that one neutral comment about the perception of what the student thought that marine environment was going to be like. I think future research should actually be looking at what have we been telling kids and what have kids been exposed to and people in general about what they think marine, marine environments look like. Because it's really important to have a good understanding and a good uh, you know, knowledge base to start building off of what we think the ocean is and then we get to go see it and we get to connect with it and then we get to begin to understand it and from that understanding we can become informed and from that informed concept we can make better decisions about how we have in, you know affect the ocean and impact it and how it impacts us so if i could close with the last slide about the reason why this is all possible and how it's all built around it it's a quote from Dr. Sylvia Earle, who I was lucky enough to be able to meet and talk to about this, this idea and its core concept. Is that knowing is the key to caring, and with caring, there is hope that people will be motivated to take action. They might not care even if they know, but they can't care if they're unaware. Underwater web cameras can be that change. Let's go for it. Thank you. Thanks so much, Mike. Thank you very much. Mike, um, how are you doing under the water there? Are you okay? Are you out of breath? How are you? That's a lot of talking while underwater. Are you all right? I'm actually kicking butt on airtime right now. I've been pretty good. Woohoo! Okay. <laughs> You're not feeling lightheaded or anything like that? I'm worried about your personal no. safety. No, no. You're... I'm actually good. So I can just tuck this up. I did it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Okay. All right. On that happy note then. Um, <laughs> Let's uh, turn it over to Dr. Kim in Edmonton. Okay, sure. <laughs> okay, my basic question and answer time. Are you ready? Wait, okay. let me, uh, I just got to tighten my mask a bit. Okay. Alrighty, let's do it. Are you okay now? Okay, good. Uh, Mike, uh, first of all, um, congratulations on your journey. Um, you have been talking about this possibility for a long time, and I can't believe this is happening. So congratulations. You, you made oh, it. Man. Yeah. Um, I have, okay, good. I have one quick question um, before a longer question. What's some um, things behind you? Those white things. Uh -huh. And there's a things behind you? Like, what's uh, that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think, what's that? Those are plumous and enemies. Oh, Basically. wow. Actually, guys, this is really cool. Hang on. It is really cool. <laughs> on, wow. I got, I got yeah. Okay, yeah. good, good. Yeah. Yeah. The water is a bit murky, but we could see it. Great, thank you. Yeah. Oh. I have a friend. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. My question is now um, on your work. Uh, I'd like to um, ask you about your opinion um, on um, STEM education. STEM education is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education. In uh, we talk about STEM approach in science education for a long time, and um, that's a current emphasis in science. And you briefly talk about how your research can contribute to STEM education. But I'd like to um, hear more about your ideas on how your research can actually impact on um, STEM education that we are talking about in current days. Sorry, so just if I can reiterate. Um... You're asking uh, how underwater web cameras can impact STEM education? Exactly, yes. Okay. I'm just going to type 
my mask up a bit more. <laughs> there we go. There. So, underwater web cameras definitely can impact STEM education, especially because it, it's focusing more on the S and the T portion of STEM. But, I would also like to add in that the JSON project is built around STEM. The JSON project uses live events like this. So there's no reason why underwater web cameras in the same capacity could not elicit response in digging into engineering. You could do marine engineering and mathematics. Well, I mean, diving all the time, it takes a lot of mathematics, especially when you're looking at your dive charts and dive plan. Especially when we're doing quadrants, surveys on the marine floor, and we're looking at different marine species that we're cataloging and collecting. When it comes to technology, well, there's a lot of technology that goes into doing something like this. And also for using underwater web cameras. And especially in the science aspect, as we've talked in the presentation. Oh, hang on. I've got a bit of silt build up around me. <laughs> but the science aspect especially is that it can initiate conversations into different science topics. Especially the marine being the focus. All right. So the Thank implications you. that I believe that would happen out of this is that coming back to the fundamentals of what STEM is, is moving towards is that STEM literacy promotes innovation. As Francis Abril had kind of said, it promotes the innovation, but it also promotes a better understanding is that being more informed about STEM subjects allows us to make more informed decisions about the health of the environment and our impacts on it. Okay, I'm glad you talked about the informed decision making in STEM education. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll pass to okay. <laughs> Dr. Price, questions for a candidate. Thank you, Dr. Blades. Mike, four years ago, you walked into my class as the first unit director in a film in Vancouver. Is mass media, and then I knew you were a natural wonder. <laughs> Today, uh, I'm standing here on Wasanic territory, about 20 feet above you, Mike, and the hope and possibility and the potential of your research has come to life. And I know I'm just so proud, uh, as I know your parents and all your ancestors are. And I just want to recognize this territory. Uh, and it's just so poignant uh, sitting here thinking about tankers going through, thinking about ocean dredging and thinking about the critical care that you express for our oceans. So, Heiske. The first question, Mike, it, it's, uh, it's a question that comes to mind is the terms of readily being able to connect with marine environments in real time, um, how this informs the student in public about decisions they're gonna make and how it might transform and impact marine environments. You know, we rely on the ocean, you know this better than anybody, and the ocean relies on us. It's our mother, it's our hope, it's our future. I want you to comment on that a little bit for us. So, absolutely. Kind of building off of what we've been talking about with STEM and ocean literacy, we need to start having these conversations. And the way to do that is that we need to connect people to the ocean. We need to engage them and motivate them in digging in and wanting to learn more about what's there. To discover it, we need to explore it. From that exploration to discovery, as it is fundamental, we learn more about it. We can take what we've been learning and we apply it to our daily lives. We can then start to learn about our impacts. And from those impacts, we can maybe even make better informed decisions politically about some of our, our current uh, treatment of the ocean. Thank you, Mike. Uh, second question here. And you and I have done a lot of dreaming, and, and this uh, dream that you've made come through through your energy and your social entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, I want you just to dream a little bit and thinking about where this technology is going to take us in the future. Uh, from self-directed to collective inquiry, uh, thinking about ocean probes and drones being uh, directed by young people, uh, simulated full-body immersion, uh, low-tech holodecks. Uh, and I just want you to sort of dream a little bit and, and you know, sort of give us a little bit of that uh, mic treatment about how the physical and spatial limitations of place can bring us all back to the mother that is our ocean. Well, you know what I've noticed in the past four years of doing this? When it started from underwater to surface using a GoPro camera, and now we are doing web broadcasts, people want to connect, people 
people want to explore, people want to discover. Technology, when you use it in the right way, can elicit the greatest response. And it gets people excited, gets people engaged and entertained and wanting to learn more. And in terms of using submersibles, ROVs, hydrophones, you name it. All of these technologies allow us to bridge that gap, to dig in deep, to go deeper, to learn more about what's down here. And it's amazing, especially, I mean, hey, I'm even thinking about using a quadcopter and video DJing between, you know, underwater, surface, PowerPoint slides, animation, and just wait until we start getting into uh, virtual reality aspects of this, and we start bridging them all together. This is one small piece of where we're going to be going. We're going to be doing a heck of a lot more in the future. One small dip for one man and a giant plunge for mankind you've accomplished. I'm going to pass it back to uh, Dr. Blake, but the uh, the crowd here is very excited that uh, that's at the wharf, Mike. Uh, congratulations on the incredible answers to those uh, challenging questions. Dr. Blades. Okay, Dr. Kim. All right. Okay, um... My um, second question is, Mike, you um, incorporated this underwater web camera in classroom teaching, right? When you're doing your pilot study. And you also discussed the, um, a bit of awareness as part of ocean literacy. And I'd like to see if you saw any response to, from students that they are really aware, they are becoming aware of the, the importance of the ocean. And I'd like to listen to like their experiences when they actually saw the underwater um, camera and what's going on yeah. in real time. Yes. Definitely, definitely. So, unfortunately, uh, with, with my research itself, uh, I wasn't allowed to incorporate what I had experienced in the process of being in the classroom and doing this over a three day or three classroom period. But what I can comment on a little bit more unofficially is that when we actually finished going through, looking through underwater web cameras, we created a food web. And we actually started drawing the connections between the species that we're looking at. We then went and learned that there was something fundamental that a lot of these species had, and that was calcium carbonate. From that, we then designed an experiment to test how calcium carbonate is affected by ocean acidity. And it went looked at how these species were being affected by the acidification that it was dissolving the calcium carbonate and that was what was required to make the shells and the body structure, the exoskeleton, you name it. We started looking at how that dissolves and breaks down and what that might mean to these marine species and what that might mean to the whole food chain. Now, something else was that, oh, just give me one sec. Here we go. Thank you. And my um, last question is, 
Um, where do you want to go from here? Oh. Maybe your underwater web camera technology. Well, to be honest with you, <laughs> this system is very, very mobile. Mm -hmm. And I think that we should start looking to other places in the world. Places where people need help to get their marine, marine research and marine sites opened up to the public. We can look at scientist partnerships, which is something I talk a little bit about in my research. And that would basically give people around the world and students around the world to then see other marine sites and other places in the world. So I'm looking at starting to open this up and not just doing it locally here, but doing it globally. And we can start looking at all kinds of topics. There's, it's a big ocean. It covers over 71% of our surface, and there's so much to learn, so much to know, so much to engage with, explore, and have fun. So that's what I want to do. Oh, well, I'll look forward to it. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Thanks, Dr. Kim. Uh, Dr. Price. Thank you very much, Dr. Blades. Uh, Mike, I just want to uh, go off my colleague's question there, and, and I'm thinking about all of the students and teachers around the world that are going to watch this video and be impacted by your work. Um, and, you know, you have this dream that you just spoke about of having schools and students and teachers producing and not just consuming information. And I think, you know, I, I envision uh, students and teachers, citizen scientists everywhere uh, getting involved in our oceans and, and getting a stake in, and, and protecting those oceans. And I want you, if you have a few words at this time, uh, for teachers and students that are listening about the journey you've taken and words that you can uh, share with them uh, to inspire and motivate them about the social entrepreneurial work that you've done here in bringing us all closer to the oceans, especially uh, if you could talk about some of the challenges you had as a student and how you've defied uh, some of those labels, how you have as a teacher, uh, you know, as a born educator, taken on this challenge and expanded the boundaries uh, where very few of, maybe no one's ever chosen to go before, Mike. All right. Um, well, as some of you might already know, my background in my undergrad was Greek and Roman history with a film minor. Here I am in education and a master's. And here I am underwater. I don't exactly show up on paper of what I actually know how to do and what I've been working on. University has given me an opportunity to dig deeper and expand upon some of the ideas and dreams that I've had to start learning a little bit more how to make them how to make them grow and how to make them a little bit more applicable. I've learned so much in a very small period of time and I've pushed very hard to make a lot of this possible and a lot of this happen, but something that I would like to say in particular, this is a family thing. This is a community thing. Everyone that I have been able to engage with and talk to, we have grown this project as a team and as a community. And here we are. I'm surrounded by some brilliant friends, scientists, brain researchers, educators, divers. I have Support. I have academic support. I have community support. We're doing this because we all believe in ocean literacy. We all believe that people should start to engage and have fun with this. There are so many things about the marine world. And I think we really need to start getting people around the world to start thinking about it. To start engaging with it on some level. Because I bet you there's something in there that you're going to be interested in. Thank you so much, Mike. Dr. Blades. Thank you, Dr. Price. Um, we have a member of the Faculty of Grad Studies here, Dr. Sanford. I don't know, Kathy, if you wanted to ask anything of our candidate right now? I think I'll, no, I think I'll pass right okay. now and wait till I'm face to face with him. Okay. <laughs> Mike, I, do, I have a question for you as well. Um, I'd like you to say, how would you define would you ocean literacy? So, ocean literacy in my research, there's seven different principles that make up ocean literacy. But at the heart of it is 
represent is understanding, for instance, all the different aspects of what make even the surface world entwined with the underwater side. That it regulates our climate and our temperature. There's all this biodiversity that is connected with seabirds, to the down here, to everything that we are doing on land and how everything that's happening down here. They are interconnected. We rely on it as it relies on us. And we need to understand those connections. That is what ocean literacy is. It gives people a chance to understand everything that is on the surface and below and how they come together and how they work together. That sounds like a really good definition of ocean literacy. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Um, any further questions by the committee? No, not from me. Dr. Price? I have a one last question, comment, sure. and and I can yeah. see it in the faces of all of his friends that he spoke about, and all the supporters, and the dive team, and all the technologists here. Is Mike? How do you keep up the magic? It seems that even <laughs> life forms and beings of the ocean have uh, sort of conspired today to, to support you with your infectious and contagious uh, enthusiasm for the ocean. And uh, on behalf of everybody here today, uh, we're just amazed. Um, so thank you, Mike. I wish I Thank could you. see the scene. <laughs> Everybody's going to get a really big hug, so I hope they don't mind. <laughs> a, big wet, a big wet hug. <laughs> okay, so I think at this point, then, what we're going to do is ask the candidate to, ironically, maybe, perhaps, leave the ocean, um, come to the surface, <laughs> uh, have him surface, as it were, and uh, move to a distance where, um, so that Dr. Kim, Dr. Price, and I can have a conversation about the oral examination and I'm going to ask everyone in this room if they wouldn't mind doing the same thing. Yes. And thank you for, I want to thank everyone who joined us in the broadcast. Uh, at this point though we're going to be cutting the broadcast and if you want to find out how Mike did you can contact him yourself. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.